a bit of trouble with this exercise today, and I don't know if it's because one of the answers is wrong and it's throwing me off, making me think I'm doing these wrong. I'm not a hundred percent sure. So like here, that a is going into the inverse function, and that's the a there. But what's not clear to me is do they mean like the a is like the x or the y so because of how it's written it's like the a is the y so like uh, if you think about it like this this should be a function of a y variable so like in in 268 f dash x would be 2x plus 3, so f uh, dash, we see the problem with the dash is it's not clear about the variable, so like this here would be like dx dy, where y is a. Think this is what they mean they think this is what they mean so here basically dx dy will be 1 over dy dx but the problem is that x here it's not the right variable it should be a y but the way you can get around that is by just uh, realizing that if the a is like the y, y equals 2, so if this is supposed to equal 2, then you can figure out that x should have been 0. So then calculating that when y is 2 is like calculating that when x is 0, which is 1 over 3. And likewise, 269, you can do the same thing. The x dy would be 1 over 3x squared plus 2 and calculating that when y is 0 uh, this is like when x if this is like y equals 0 this is like x equals minus 1 so this is like when x equals minus 1 which is 1 over 5 and then in 270 calculating the x dy which is what I'm saying this is that would be 1 over dy dx which is one plus a half x to the minus a half calculating that when y is two would be like calculating the this one here when x is uh, one one plus a half is one and a half is three over two so this is two over three 271 um, so we get dx dy would be 1 over 1 plus 2 over x squared or if you want just to be there 2x to the minus 2 calculating that when y is 1 would be like calculating this when x is minus 1 because if you put in minus one, you get minus one plus two, which is one. This one is, uh, these last ones are easy, zero and zero. Uh, that's one plus two, that's one over three. 272, the x, dy. Um, that is 1 over 1 plus cos x, but calculating that at y equals 0 is like calculating that at x equals 0, which is 1 over 2. And then finally, 273, the x dy, when y is 0, is like calculating 1 over 1 over cos squared x plus 6x, when x is 0, which is... 1 over 1. So just 1 then. So 
So if I check the answers here, 269 is right, 271 is right, no, it's it's not, it is right, yeah, 271 is right, um, and 273 is right. So it's a little bit unclear, maybe, so just to make it a bit clearer, what I'm saying is F inverse dash at A, that's like calculating the x dy where y equals a. So this is in a, uh, a y variable, which will be 1 over dy dx. Uh, but you have to find the x here, which we call x0. Uh, x equals x0, and you have to make sure f of x0 equals a. So it, it's a little bit confusing with the notation, and it confuses me a little bit, because I wasn't exactly sure what they were saying a was, but I guess it has to be like a y, because it's going into the inverse function. I, I guess, um, you know, it's kind of tempting to think that this x variable here is the same variable as this guy here but it's not um f inverse derivative y is equal to this uh, rather than the letter x I think it's interesting because I always prefer to use the letter y when it's a variable inside the inverse function. And some books and some people I've worked with are very adamant that you should still use the letter x when it's an inverse function. But I am really uh, against this. And I can see this as a good example of why me insisting on using the letter y when you're talking about inverse function is a good thing because it prevents uh, confusion. So I feel sort of justified and vindicated with that decision. So yeah, I think um, I know it's a short video, but like I said, I actually have to make this one twice because I thought I was doing it wrong the first time, but actually now that I think about it and I, I check the answers at the back, I'm actually happy that I'm doing it right. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. Um, what would be next anyways? Let's have a look. Um, uh, derivatives of inverse. So that, uh, that kind of takes it up to there. And for each of the given functions, find the slope of the tangent line to its inverse function at the indicated point. Find the equation of the tangent line. Yeah. So it's it's kind of the same thing again. Actually, it's easier because they've given you the x and y, so there's no messing about trying to figure out who's who and to go from one to the other. So uh, I think that'll be fine for next time then. And then ugh. I'm not really looking forward to doing those. Okay, but we'll finish at 273 today, a short one for today. Thanks for watching.